In the previous cart pull tutorial we solved the cart pull problem using Q learning. In Q learning, action with high value is selected using behavioral value function Q. An optimal Q function is estimated by repeatedly observing actions and states and calculating temporal difference of the current Q value in Q in the next state. Here a problem arises. The Q function, even though it is called a function, is actually a table. The Q table might become very large and might use a huge amount of memory if there are many states and actions. For example, if we are solving a maze problem, the number of states will increase with the square of side length. And for cart pole problem, if an image is used for the input, the number of states can become very large. To solve this problem, DQN was invented. DQN stands for Deep Q Network. The main idea of DQN is that instead of using a table, a neural network is used. By using a neural network, this method becomes more suitable for problems with continuous values. The objective of the DQN is the same as in the usual Q learning, agent wants to be in the maximum valuable state after acting. So, neural network is trained using the difference of the current state and the target value. DQN architecture consists of three different components. Target network, Q network and experience buffer. The Q network is trained to produce the optimal state action value. In this tutorial Q network is a standard neural network architecture with a couple of hidden layers. If state data is represented as images or text, CNN or RNN architecture can also be used. The target network is identical to the Q network. It is used while creating experience data sets. In experience buffer data to train Q network is stored. Let's see how DQN works. In the first step, the current state is put into the target network and the Q value is obtained. In the second step, based on the Q value, agent selects an action. Note that the epsilon greedy method is used to select an action. Epsilon greedy action selection is a method that randomly selects an action with a probability of epsilon and selects an action with the highest expected value Q with a probability 1 minus epsilon. Usually, the epsilon value is decreased as learning goes on, because the agent gets more information about the environment and can make more confident decisions. Also, the epsilon greedy method prevents the agent from going to the local maximum. In the third step, the agent observes a reward in a new state from the environment. In the fourth step, experience is stored in the experience buffer. Here experience is a set of state, action, new state and reward. It is considered to be a good practice to use the reward clipping method. Clipping the rewards to be in the minus 1 and 1 range reduces the impact of extreme observations, making the model more robust. But whether clipping or not and how to clip the values depends on the model and use case. In the step 5, Q network performs learning using several experiences sets from the experience buffer. This method is called experience replay. This method is used because if a neural network were trained with single samples, each sample and the corresponding gradients would have too much variance, and the network weights would not converge. Also, note that we are doing training on Q network, not target network. This is done to avoid the moving Q targets problem. When the agent trained, the weights updated accordingly to the temporal difference. But the same weights apply to both the target and the predicted value. So, it is like chasing the target and the training process becomes oscillated. By using a second network that doesn't get trained, we ensure that the target Q values remain stable. In the step 6, after a pre-configured number of time steps, the learned weights from the Q network are copied over to the target network. There are two methods of updating target network parameters. The first one is hard update. This is when all Q network parameters are copied to the target network periodically. 
The second one is soft update. This is when the target network gets updated only partially. In this tutorial we use hard update. Now let's experiment how much Q network and target network architecture does actually improve learning. Firstly, we will do card pole simulation with a network that does learning and evaluation on the same network, and then we will do the same simulation with Q network and target network architecture. Firstly, let's see the code of a single network DQN. Here, a subscriber for link states is created. This is required to get cart and pole positions and velocities. In this part, we define hyperparameters for learning and creating instance of the agent class. The agent class consists of three member functions. The purpose of the agent class is updating the Q function and getting an action based on the calculated Q value. Actual neural network related calculations are done in the brain class. Here, a neural network is defined. This is a simple network consisting of an input layer, two hidden layers and an output layer. Note that we have four inputs, that is cart position, cart linear velocity, pole angle, pole angular velocity and 10 output states. As an activation function, rectified linear unit is used. Rectified linear unit function outputs input directly if it is positive, otherwise, it outputs zero. Also, here we define loss function. MSE means mean squared error. It is a common metric to use when assessing how accurate our model is performing. Here, the optimizer is defined. ADAM stands for Adaptive Moment Estimation. This is one of the most used optimizers in the machine learning. The method is more efficient than other methods when working with large problems involving a lot of data or parameters. In the update QNet function Q network weights are updated. In the get action function, cart action is decided based on epsilon greedy method. Note that in the training mode, in the very beginning of the simulation, values for the action are often selected randomly. But epsilon decreases over time and gradually actions get to be selected based on the generated Q value. Also, the Q network which is used to decide an action is the same with that we are training, and this is where the so-called moving Q targets problem occurs. In the simulate function, the actual cart pole simulation for each episode is done. Here, cart and pole states are obtained from the subscriber. Here, based on the observation, the next action is decided. If the pole tilts more than 0.6 radians or remains within 0.6 radians for all simulation steps, the episode ends. For each step, the agent gains a reward. The reward becomes smaller depending on the pole angle. If the episode finishes before the final step, we give a penalty of minus 200. Here, based on the obtained action, the force with which the card is actuated, is calculated. The maximum force is 8 newtons. In this part the neural network is updated based on the observed states, action and reward. Now let's do the simulation. The project file link is in the description. We will do the simulation for 1000 episodes. Each episode is 200 steps, and each step duration is 0.02 seconds. As we can see, the learning process is unstable and for the majority of steps the pole falls immediately. The pole begins to remain straight more or less consistently only after 600 steps.
Now let's look at the code with two neural networks. The main program flow is the same. But now we have a replay memory class. In memory array experiences are stored. Experience consists of state, action, next state, and reward. There is also a sample member function which returns array of experiences in random order. Also, the brain class is much different. Now we have two networks, main queue network and target queue network. The learning process of the main queue network runs in the replay function. Agent class now has member functions to update main queue function and target queue function and a function to store experience in the memory array. The difference in the simulate function is that we have a step that stores experience and after that we update main queue function. Note that target queue function is updated only once in two steps. Now let's do the simulation. As in the first simulation, each episode is 200 steps, and duration of each step is 0.02 seconds. As we can see, with this method, learning is much faster and more stable. Around 300 steps are required for the pole to become stable. So, this experiment result proves that DQN with two networks is an efficient architecture for learning.